It's very likely if you just picked up the Magic Keyboard, you're not really using it at its full potential. What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a bunch of cool things that you could do with the new Magic Keyboard. Now, if you're one of the lucky few that got your hands on one of these, continue watching this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you all the, basically all the must know essentials you need to know to get the most out of this awesome accessory. Literally, it's really awesome. It's like a little mini MacBook Pro. No bigger than a notebook too. Let's get started. All right, before we begin, timestamps are right here if you wanna skip through stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and start with the basics and make sure everybody's on the same page. Now, first thing first, if this is your first keyboard, by tapping the space key and tapping twice after Face ID detects you, it unlocks your device and welcomes you in without having to press on the body or the screen itself. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start off with gestures first. So, to access Control Center, by going on a corner, and tapping where the battery icon and Wi-Fi, all that information, that'll automatically launch Control Center. Using three fingers, swipe up, that'll take you to the home page. If you want quick access to your notifications, you just go do the same thing, but this time on the left side, make sure it's highlighted where the time and date is, click on it, and there's all your notifications. Again, three fingers swipe up, will take you home. If you want access to the spotlight from the home page, you can just use two fingers and swipe down. Now that's one way to get your notifications, but if you go up in the center and swipe up again, that brings it down quicker as well. And of course, home page. So let's go ahead and quickly just go ahead and open up an app. Open up podcast. While in the app, if you go down, go down again, it will activate your dock. You may also access dock by hitting command option D and it pops up. With this dock, this also allows you to multitask like you would with your finger so you can click and drag and I'm pretty sure you already know the rest. Now again, swipe bottom up, will take you back home. And to enter the multitask menu, use three fingers, just hold it midway, and it'll automatically launch in the background like so. With three fingers swipe, either left or right side will allow you to jump between different apps. Now if either you're browsing on Safari, just like a mobile device, or even your laptop, a pinch and zoom allows you to zoom in on the image. Now when you're watching a video, if you go over the video and you do the same pinch and zoom, it'll automatically bring it to full screen. And if you want to exit this, just unzoom and there you go. Now certain apps have special shortcuts. YouTube does not support it, so even if you do it, but if you hit command H, that's another quick way to go home. That's universal. But if we go ahead and open up a new note on the note app and you press and hold command, it'll list all the shortcuts you can do with your keyboard. Now each app is different, so on Safari, if you do the exact same, there's your different shortcuts you can do for Safari. But the main important ones that's universal across no matter what app you encounter is this. As we already showed you, Command H is the home button. If you hold down Command and tap Tap, this will also allow you to switch between certain applications. So let's select music. Boom, we're in the music category. And then, you could even go back home if you want. But a cool thing about this is, let's say you wanna quickly close an app. By doing the same thing, hold down command and use the tap key. Let's say we wanna close settings. Just tap Q, it closes. Podcast, close. YouTube, close. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure you get the point now. But that's how you could quickly go to one app as well as close them. And if you wanna access the spotlight, no matter what application you're in, this is another shortcut you could do. Simply holding down command and spacebar will bring up spotlight no matter the app you're in. Even will work on the home page, obviously. Now emojis, a lot of people tend to forget about this. Uh, one of my friends who's like miles away from me actually asked me, how does he access emoji on their magic keyboard? And just like your ordinary on-screen keyboard, the globe. Just tap on here and select emojis. Unfortunately, it's not on the keyboard itself. You're gonna have to use the trackpad but that's how you get quick access to that, as well as your other third-party keyboards you may have already installed. So those are the essentials when it comes to just ease of use without having to touch the screen. Now let's go ahead and talk about customization. As you may have already noticed, my cursor is blue. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I did that. But first thing first, let's just go over the most commonly asked questions. How do you adjust the brightness on the keyboard? Unfortunately, there's no shortcut for this. Hopefully Apple is watching this video because we demand this. Well, I want it, I'm pretty sure many others, because this is a pain in the butt to do. 
in order to adjust the brightness on the keyboard, it's not in the control center, you have to go into your settings, go in general, and go down to keyboard. Right here under hardware keyboard, click on this, and this is where you could adjust the brightness level. Now, there's an interesting thing I also wanna show you is modify keys. You can remap certain keys to do different commands. So as an example, let's say we want our globe key to be our escape key. So instead of accessing emojis, whenever you tap that globe icon on your keyboard, it's gonna be your escape key because the Magic Keyboard doesn't have a dedicated escape key like a laptop. So if you wanna remap certain things, this is where you go. Now going back, still in the settings, under the general tab, if you go down to trackpad, if you feel like the speed is too fast or too slow, this is where you could actually go in and adjust that. Now down here, these two things, by default, I think one of them was disabled. I enabled both of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and give you the quick rundown why I like tap to click. Was tap to click enabled, if we go home and if we just tap on the mouse pad without clicking it, it launched the app. So it basically does the command. And then the two finger for second click, it's kind of like a faster way for force press. By doing this, you get the force press option. Now you still have access to force press if you actually press and hold on a certain app, it pops up. Now the way I personalize my cursor is by going into the settings, but instead you go down to accessibilities and go down where you see pointer control. Go in here and right here is where you can actually select the color that you like. You can select orange, yellow, green, blue, white, personal preference, but this is where you can actually customize your device a little bit more. And if you think it's too thin, you could thicken it up like so. That's a thick boy right there. Oh my God, I can't believe I said that, but I'm sure you get the picture, but that's how you personalize it. I like to leave a minimum. And over here, the pointer animation, if you feel like this is unnecessary, how it just adapts to whatever you're highlighting. If you disable pointer animation, it's just a traditional like pointer at this point. Now, another interesting one, now this is a personal preference, but trackpad inertia, typically when it's enabled, this is what happens. When you slide your finger across the screen, but you lift off, the cursor is still moving by the momentum, right? If you turn that off, now when you do that, it stops. Like as soon as you lift your finger up, it stops. So maybe some folks find it annoying that their cursor just like floats. So again, personal preference, play with that. Then of course you got scrolling speed when you're like scrolling on Safari. That's not really much of a tip. That's just, uh, it's here if you're looking for that. Now the next things I wanna show you, this is just a life hack that I find myself doing most of the time. When you're watching a video, cause my window's literally like over there. But when I'm watching a video in the morning and there's a lot of glare coming into my screen, what I like to do is flip it like so. And then this acts like a sun visor. So it eliminates the glare on my display and I can continue watching my videos or read whatever PDF article I have open on my screen. Now a flimsy trick that I've been seeing a lot of people do for some reason, I don't recommend this because it's not designed for this, but you can. Technically, this is like a sketch or note taking mode where you fold, where you have your keyboard folded up like so, but you have it downwards and you could just take your notes, right? It's a cool life hack if you need it but I tried it a few times and usually what ends up happening is I apply too much pressure and it easily just falls down. Like I'm not even trying to make it fall flat. It does it. So, I mean, play with it, see if maybe you like it. I know with the other folio keyboard by Apple, the one with the strong magnets, it doesn't do that. I used to actually do it on that one. I, I don't recommend it on this one. Now here's another bit of a random one, but has anybody else been treating their iPad magic keyboard as a way to give your device wireless charging. Sometimes I just plug it into power right here and I just leave it like on the side of my desk and whatever my iPad is low on batteries, I just do this and let it charge overnight. I guess this is a clever way to give your iPad wireless charging capabilities. And then when you need it, you have a full charge. And there we have it folks. Hope you got some good information out of this. If you haven't picked one up yet, just put this on your playlist, save it for later. And once yours finally arrive, I know there's a small delay now, it's like on back order during the time of making this video. But as soon as yours arrive, rewatch this video and refresh your mind. Guys, if you wanna check out more iPad stuff, check out this video over here. It's like go through my favorite hidden features about the iPad Pro. And then that video over there, it has a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. 
feel free to watch either or. But again, thank you so much for watching. Stay strong, stay healthy, and uh, yeah, keep your hands clean. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.